Hi everyone and welcome to another SOLIDWORKS eCAD Solutions video series. And this time we're going to be talking about SOLIDWORKS electrical implementation. Now this is the first video of this series and inside of this video we're really just going to be talking through this PowerPoint presentation where it has a lot of notes and just basic information that I feel is very important for when you are getting started with this software. So the overall expectations that this video series is going to be for, um, even though it may seem like it is training, it's not to take place, it's not to take the place, I should say, of the official training through your local value added reseller. There's a lot of things in the official training that I'm not going to cover in this module here. But what it is designed to do is to help you get started with the software, a quick start, setting things up, your wire styles, we'll get into a lot of that stuff, but it's really just to help the users or even the IT department set things up the right way so that you are successful moving forward with your projects. So before you start your first design, we wanna take a minute to think about um, what you've been creating in the past. What, is, what are some of the things that you've been doing already? What kind of design standards do you have? Your, your wire types, your title blocks, all those manufacturer parts that you're using, your custom symbols. Those are things that can be added or just rebuilt to match your current practices. And matching these things may not just help the design team, but you have to think about uh, that, that whole change, that workflow change, um, and how it's going to affect other other divisions, other teams downstream as well. So building that that uh, building this list up is only going to help us. So come up with a plan, have a meeting, um, take notes, and make a plan for all those things that are absolutely necessary that you need to carry over into SolidWorks Electro before you even start using the software. Now there are four key elements to the software. And the first is the SQL Server. This is a SQL-based tool, um, and it can, contains majority of the electrical information, um, includes all the library data, the project data, and any metadata for all the manufacturer parts. Then there's the collaborative server, which monitors and manages access um, in the user environment. It also provides notifications for the users so that maybe, for example, I have a sheet open, and I have another user who's trying to also log into that project, it lets that other user know that, hey, one, there's already somebody working here, but two, that person also has sheets one, two, and three locked out, and um, you know I have to work on sheet four or five at the time. The next one is your program data folder. This contains all the electronic file information that can't be stored in SQL. Um, a lot of the DWGs, the graphical representations of your symbols and such. And then finally, there's the application that you'll be using day in, day out, um, creating your schematics and setting up your reports and such. Now, the collaboration capabilities, you take all those elements and you combine them to either make the single user environment or the multi-user environment. Now, for both the single and multi-user, you need all four of those elements that I showed in the previous slide. Now, in a single user environment, you may want to install all four of those items in the same computer on that local computer of that user. In a multi-user environment, it makes sense to install the SQL database and the collaborative, um, the collaborative server as well as even the program data on a, comp on a network drive. Um, that way, multi-users can access that. Now, about the single user, you can also set up a single user in the same manner as a multi-user. Why would you wanna do that? Well, the one reason why is maybe you're buying one seat right now of this software or just trying it out, but there's potential for growth within two months, three months, even a year. It may make sense to install it in the multi-user environment now. That way, when it's time to um, bring on a second user, third user, or 10th user on board with your tool, it's a simple adding a new client and pointing them to the same locations that the first person is using. So it's a lot less of a headache later on. You can connect to 3D. So SOLIDWORKS Electrical is its own standalone tool. 
it does not automatically connect to 3D. What there is is a 3D add-in that you would need to purchase on top of the SOLIDWORKS electrical schematic tool. The 3D connection is not required to create schematics. All the schematics are done in the SOLIDWORKS electrical executable. However, you can connect your 2D schematics to your, your schematic symbols to your 3D parts and vice versa. If it is, if you've made this connection, you can now take and make those 3D models and correlate them back to your 2D symbols. And this completes that 3D adding completes that handshake between the two applications. Um, and it enables new functionality within the 3D environment, such as routing your wires and cables. Ultimately, the end goal, goal of this is it allows the teams to collaborate more efficiently. So what's going to come in the next several videos that I'm going to show? Uh, well, we're going to talk about our project templates and properly setting up project templates. Now, a lot of the terms we use in SOLIDWORKS Electrical may differ from terms that you have used in previous tools. So again, we'll get into that when we get to that specific video about project templates. We'll dive a little deeper into that. We'll talk about our libraries. We'll break down all the different types of libraries you have inside of SOLIDWORKS Electrical particularly your symbols and your manufacturer parts, which are the two most commonly used libraries of the system. And just basic um, of software basics, such as you, the project architecture, the books, the folders and such, um, your schematic types, there's different types of sheets you can choose from and creating the overall schematics. And some of the things you're gonna do when you create that schematic, drawing wires and drawing symbols. Uh, and we'll cover basics about all of that stuff. So the next video, again, we'll jump into the tool here, SOLIDWORKS Electrical, um, and we'll start with our projects manager, and we'll go through project creation and project te uh, template creation. So stay tuned for the, the rest of these videos. I really, hopeful, I really hope they're helpful, and thanks for watching.